she was a YouTuber that quickly grew notoriety. And although the messages behind her content came from care and nurture, her story would twist over time into anger and annihilation. My name is Adrian, and welcome back to another video by Coffeehouse Crime. Today we're looking at the case of Nassim Magdam, and her YouTube career which ended in tragedy. If you're a fan of Coffeehouse Crime, you've probably seen other episodes here of YouTubers that went on to become killers. But what about a YouTuber who tried to kill YouTube? By the way, I post solved and strange cases here on a weekly basis, so if that's your kind of caffeine, please consider subscribing to Coffeehouse Crime. So, who is Nasim? What made her so strange? And what led her down a path of destruction? Pull up a seat, grab a coffee, and sit back. This is the case of Nasim Agdam. Although today's video takes us to the United States of America, let's first wind the clocks back to where this story began, in the West Asian country of Iran. From a peaceful point of view, Iran has undoubtedly seen better days. But behind its diplomatic and economic struggles, other positive aspects can be brought to light. Holding 11 of the world's 13 categorized climates, Iran's beauty is rich and diverse. It's better known for its arid environment, which often enshrouds popular cities like Tehran and Esfahan. But head to the north, and you'll find the temperate Hyrcanian forest, tropical beaches, and even snow, settling down on Alamkur, found just outside of the capital. Formerly known as Persia, Iran owes a lot of its interesting architecture to its historic roots, which can be found throughout the country. We're heading to Iran's 10th most populous city, Ermia, located in the province of West Azerbaijan. Not to be confused with Lake Ermia, or the country Azerbaijan. It was in the year of 1979, and, more specifically the 5th of April, that Nasim Agdam was born, to her father Ismail Agdam and her mother. Nasim also had a brother, Sharan Agdam, and the four of them would live together in their modestly sized family home. Although not much is known about her younger years, Nasim was reported to have a happy upbringing as a child. And she was a very conscious child too. Nasim stopped eating meat at the age of seven, becoming a vegetarian without any direction or influence from her family. Just like her parents, Nasim was a registered member of the Baha'i Faith, a religion that started not even 200 years ago in the year of 1844. Baha'i holds no strong feelings towards eating meat, and Nasim genuinely became a vegetarian on her own accord. It was in the year of 1996 that Nasim's father had found himself a business opportunity in the United States, and following some mild convincing, the family decided that it was in their best interest to immigrate over and try something new. Life in Iran wasn't so bad, but they do say that variety is the spice of life. But the real story here is more complicated than that. In short, the faith of Baha'i is small, and for that reason, it's heavily persecuted in Iran. The Agdam family had a home that… probably felt unsafe. It's likely that they had a second motive to find refuge by moving to the US. And so, with that in mind, 1996, San Diego. Life here was very different when compared to Iran. And the change in culture and ways of American life was difficult for the Agdam family. But for Nasim, it was even harder. She was 16 years old at the time. Life was confusing enough. And now, she had to deal with a complete change of what she considered to be normal. Something that she never quite managed to get her head around because Nassim Agdam would never quite assimilate into American culture. She continued to identify as Persian online, and would carry on to primarily speak in her native language, Farsi. And while she did attend school, she never made more than a couple friends. Instead, she turned to the world of the internet for her social needs and her entertainment. And this in response, further isolated Nassim from the rest of those physically living around her. 
Nassim also never found love. As she grew from her late teens into her adult years, she never had a man, or anyone else for that matter, in the picture. Not to say that she didn't have any compassion, it just wasn't with anybody. In the year of 2007, she adopted a baby rabbit, one that would become her best friend. The one thing that remained true to Nassim as she moved into her adulthood was her belief in animal welfare and becoming a vegan. In the year of 2009, she attended a demonstration with the People for Ethical Treatment of Animals, also known as PETA, where she wielded a sword and wore a wig with jeans painted in blood drops, to protest against the use of pigs in psychological training for the military. In an interview with local news reporters, she said, For me, animal rights equal human rights. Nassim would carry on to attend several more protests with Peter throughout the year, but by the year of 2010, she had changed her phone number and disappeared off the map. Other activists were surprised to see her go, but the abrupt stop in her attendance was not because she had given up. In fact, it was quite the opposite. With an isolated lifestyle, a frequent presence on the internet, and a burning passion that she wanted to share with the rest of the world, Nassim decided to take herself to YouTube and other social media platforms instead. It was in September of 2010 that she joined YouTube under the name Vegan Nassim. There she would describe herself as a Persian female bodybuilder and animal rights activist that promoted healthy and humane living. And in fairness to the woman, she would grow quite a following. But it was not necessarily for her persistence over animal rights. She also garnered that following as a model, dancer, comedian, artist, and athlete. In short, Nassim had many faces to her YouTube career. And on paper, she sounded multi-talented. However, as with all forms of creativity, one must decide between quality or quantity. You can't have both when time is a valuable limit. Either that, or she just wasn't robust at finessing her videos because some of the content she made was very bizarre. Nice to meet you. Can I kiss you? I could show you hidden things. Pain, sadness, hair, crime, sell your food. Oh my brain, look at that meat. It looks like your next heart attack. Life's a game, wanna play New job, wife, cell phone This is all you want, ain't it funny? <laughs> I know you hate me, but hey, let's be friends My brain is still trying to process that video Strangeness aside, Nassim's content had a very prominent structure It would almost always be centred around vegan food or animal rights And over time, she would find her feet on the YouTube domain And although her content was certainly not for everyone like I said, she grew a respectably sized audience, who followed her for one reason or another. Soon after, she opened another account, Nassim Sabs, meaning Green Nassim in Farsi, which also focused on her personal life and modelling. And next was Nassim Handmaids, an account for her creative endeavours. And then finally, Yasil Nassim, the same as Nassim Sabs, but for her newly growing Turkish audience. Over time, Nassim would grow a large following on YouTube, with over 27,000 subscribers and over 9 million views. And on Instagram, where she described herself as an athlete, artist, comedian, poet, model, singer, host, actor, director, and producer, she bolstered up to 60,000 followers. Just remember what I said about quality versus quantity. She also described herself as the most well-known and most famous animal rights activist in the Persian and Turkish communities. One of her music videos even made it to Andesher TV and other Persian TV channels. And, just like the rest of her videos, they were something. Over time, Nassim's popularity in Iran grew from one milestone to the next, 
and eventually she was well known on Iranian social media too, mostly for her advocacy for animal rights, healthy living, and veganism. And just maybe the bizarreness to her videos were intentional, but who knows? Adding this to her educational format and her style seemed to work pretty well in attracting viewers. At one point, Nassim even kickstarted her own non-profit organisation called Peace Thunder Inc, intending to be an animal rights foundation. Just one small detail, but Nassim would elect to dissolve her company only one month later. It's the thought that counts, right? It was in the year of 2013 that Nassim moved with her parents from San Diego to Menifee, also located in California. Their neighbours would describe the Agdam family as very friendly. However, they did not see Nassim very often. She was always inside, working on her own projects. I'm trying my hardest not to drag this video out with her content. But her work is just so jarring. So, maybe one more video? Okay, I think that's enough. Her YouTube channels would continue to grow as the years went by, but in parallel to that, so did the bizarreness to her videos, and arguably her own levels of self paranoia. She would go on rants to her audience about how she was being targeted and victimised by anti-vegan businesses, at one point claiming that they had tried to kill her by puncturing her tyre with a nail. Her efforts to promote animal rights were also becoming more extreme. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with being a vegan or a vegetarian, and at the end of the day, that decision is a personal one to make. But her videos were becoming more and more graphic, all available to a public audience, on a public platform. So graphic, that I cannot show them in this video. And along with her fame, came more questions directed towards her about her own mental health. She was often asked if she was mentally ill, in which she would always reply, I don't have any special mental or physical disease, but I do live on a planet filled with disease, disorders, perversions, and injustices. It was in the year of 2017 that the YouTuber started having problems with, well, YouTube. Although in the past she had generated thousands of views and new subscribers, she started to experience a massive drop in both, and this was noticed on not one, but all four of her channels. Furthermore, she felt that even with the views that she was still getting, her revenue as a percentage had also plummeted. She would even show her YouTube analytics on her website, where she further complained about the platform. The technicalities behind her ad revenue are a grey area. At the time, YouTube were going through massive changes to their ad-friendly guidelines, and the algorithm, which would dictate what videos were classed as safe monetization or not, was still heavily in beta. This meant that, at least for now, Nassim's videos didn't seem to be making the cut for monetization. It's not known whether that was due to the change in guidelines or if it was due to the algorithm, but she was still posting graphic videos of animal abuse online. So... From this point onward, Nassim would add the platform of YouTube to her list of enemies. A list that, not surprisingly, had been growing for several months. She began to see YouTube in a very negative light, and blamed her dwindling views on them, more specifically, believing that YouTube were filtering and suppressing her videos due to her content. She even went as far to protest on the corners of streets, holding up signs claiming that the company is a dictatorship with a hidden policy, a place that allegedly promotes stupidity, discrimination, and the suppression of truth. She also took the war to her website, categorising YouTube to Adolf Hitler, even though the quote that she referenced was never actually made by him. Nassim also complained about her lack of free speech, which, according to her, was worse in America than Iran. Fast forward to the year 2018, and things would tank even further for Nassim. 
Following the rather devastating video of YouTuber Logan Paul in Japan's Akigahara Forest, another wave of tweaks to YouTube's monetization policy were made, and this further shunted Nassim's revenue down the drain. By now, Nassim and her behaviour had become much more convoluted. Although her activism for animal welfare had stemmed from a positive place, the method and deliverance of her messages were becoming much more graphic and aggressive. She had fallen out with her family on multiple occasions too, and eventually, she decided to move out of the family household and move in with her grandmother back in San Diego. As Nassim's frustration with YouTube continued to grow, so did her urges to do something about it. And all in the meanwhile, her paranoia and her exaggerated thought patterns continued to exacerbate. It was on the 31st of March 2018 that Nassim would suddenly break contact with her family and disappear. They had been in many arguments in the weeks leading up to this moment, but despite this, her parents weren't too worried about her. Nevertheless, they knew that she had a chip on her shoulder and wanted to make sure that she was okay. So on April the 2nd, two days later, they filed a missing persons report with police. To begin with, no one knew where Nassim was, but just the very next morning at 1.40am, police would find her asleep in her car in a Walmart parking lot. Hi, are you in a scene? Yeah. Hey, so you reported as missing. Yeah, as missing from San Diego? Yeah, I left my family. Okay. okay. Can I can I just ask if you don't mind why you left? We don't get the line together, so I left. Them. Okay. Do you have ID on you by chance? Sure. We're just not getting along with your family? Yeah, I'm uh, with my brother. Yeah. How long have you been here in Mountain View? I left home, so I came here two days ago. Oh, wow. Okay. Did you tell anybody where you went? No, not yet. Okay. You don't want to hurt yourself, do you? Or you don't want to hurt anybody else? You don't want to commit suicide or anything like that, right? Okay. Are you ever planning on going back home? No? <laughs> okay, fair enough. So all we're gonna do, we just had to make sure that you were okay. So we're gonna, we have to call your dad. We're just gonna let him know that you're fine and you wish not to be contacted. Is there anything you want us to tell your parents? Okay. Okay. Alrighty. <laughs> you're welcome. The officers, who followed proper procedure and protocol, allowed Nassim to go without any obligation to contact her parents. She seemed stoic, and her plans seemed naive, but regardless, she was safe. Her actions, demeanour, and answers did not present any cause for concern to the officers. She didn't seem to be a threat to herself or to others. However, little did they know that Nassim was only 25 miles southeast of one of YouTube's largest offices. And she did indeed have a plan. And a pistol in the back of her car. In the early hours of the 3rd of April 2018, Nassim Agdam drove from Walmart in Mountain View to San Bruno, a journey that would only take about 30 minutes along Route 101. And once she arrived, she visited a local firing range and practiced the use of her pistol. Once she felt competent enough, she then left the facility and returned back to her car. Shortly after, she then drove to 901 Cherry Avenue the address of YouTube's headquarters, before parking her vehicle in the car park right next door. And just moments later, Nassim Magdam entered YouTube headquarters through an external door, leading to a patio full of YouTube employees. And right in the middle of their lunch break, Nassim began the final chapter to her life. She pulled out a Smith & Wesson 9mm handgun, before opening fire into the crowd. Employees all around scrambled to flee the area, while those who were inside locked the doors and called 911. Within two minutes, officers were on the scene. And as they did, they would find Nassim Agdam lifeless on the ground. After firing into the crowd, she had made her final decision in life to end it.
Emergency services, who were rapid to respond to the incident, would be there not even 100 seconds after initial 911 calls were made. They were very quick to scope out the threats and attend to civilian injuries. And although they had arrived in quick and relentless retaliation, the carnage was already over. Although Nassim Agdam had stormed through the courtyard with a pistol and shot three people, all three were only injured and still alive. They were rushed to hospital for their wounds, and soon after, they all made a full recovery in the weeks and months after the attack. By 11pm that night, police had officially identified the assailant as Nassim Agdam, and shortly after, her social media profiles would explode in views, before being taken offline permanently. A coroner's report found that Nassim had died of a self-inflicted gunshot to the heart, and found no evidence of drugs or alcohol in her system. The day of the shooting, happening only two days before her 39th birthday. YouTube would release a statement the very next day, detailing its shock of the attack, yet appreciating the speed in which officers responded. Nassim's decision to attack YouTube was very surprising. Although she was on the platform, she actually had no personal relationship or even connection to anyone working at YouTube. Randomly targeting employees highlights the psychological state and condition that Nassim was in. She was prepared to kill innocent people just to get her message across to the platform. A message which, I guess, highlights her anger at being demonetized. Either that or her belief in the platform was operating under some sort of covert dictatorship. Which is just ridiculous to believe in anyway. Either way, her channel is now definitely demonetized and she's also unlikely to ever persuade another human to becoming a vegan. So, I don't know what exactly she was trying to prove with her attack. She achieved absolutely nothing in the process. Whether she was living with an undiagnosed mental health issue or not, we will probably never know. Nassim clearly had some unusual thought patterns going on when it came to her perception towards YouTube, and even to some extent, the way in which she believed America operates. Her vegan ideologies were not necessarily unwelcome to the platform, and I don't think YouTube had a problem with that either. My opinion is that she was demonetized for the way in which she shared her content, a rule that I hold very close to my own heart, but here on YouTube, the tone in which you present your content is very important. And YouTube are in a very tough situation too, if you think about it. There is no one-size-fits-all, every channel is different, and it's difficult for a large company to accurately assess all of them. Nassim should have opened up communication with the platform, learned from her mistakes, and adapted her content to get back on track. Instead, she chose violence, in the most unpeaceful and uncalculated way possible. Following news of the attack, Nassim's parents were devastated. In their initial statement, they said, Our family is in absolute shock and can't make sense of what happened yesterday. Although no words can describe our deep pain for this tragedy, our family would like to express their utmost regret and sorrow for what has happened to innocent victims. The Agdam family would eventually welcome media to their home, in which interviews revealed a mother and a father who were as shocked as they were distraught. Two loving parents who had never thought that their own daughter would attempt to become a cold-blooded killer. Today was her birthday. Today. Today, yeah, her birthday. I just have a little top there, man. And now i thinking she never hurt one and how she shoot the people. The couple even showed Nassim's bedroom, the room where she once made her videos in, and the blue wall, which was once seen by thousands of viewers, now only greeting the odd guest that stays by her parents' home. And although her website and YouTube channel no longer exist, Nassim's telegram channel, Nassim Sabs One, is still up to this date. The channel, now a media graveyard, to a very disturbing individual. Thank you so much for watching another video today by Coffeehouse Crime, and joining me in another bizarre case of true crime. 
If you found this video interesting, or you learned something new today, then please consider liking the video and subscribing if you haven't yet. I post cases here weekly. What do you think of Nassim Agdam? What do you think the motive was behind her crimes? And do you think she really thought her actions through? Please let me know in the comments down below. It's almost Halloween here, so I'm off to carve pumpkins, and maybe spookify the coffee house. I'll be back again soon, and when I am, I'll be right here behind this camera, waiting for you in the next one. Until that moment arrives though, look after each other. Goodbye.